Hey guys, it's Stephen here, the Mad Doc. Just thought I'd put together a, uh, a short video uh, showcase slash tutorial on uh, how to magnetize models and uh, different uses you can get out of them. And um, just put that together so it's in, uh, in one spot. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll see that I, uh, I do quite like to, to use magnets and uh, have a bunch of uh, various sizes and uh, uses for them. I guess the uh, the main reason you're likely to want to magnetize models is to uh, have weapon options available. They uh, aren't necessarily cheap and uh, if you are wanting to try out different options, different looks, the gaming meta changes, things like that, then uh, you don't want to necessarily lock yourself into um, sort of one build. You want to be able to use the options in the, the multi-part plastic models. For example, if you have a, a Captain, this is a, a great kit that comes with a lot of different options, power fists, power swords, uh, the, the gun options, plasma, bolter, combi, <clears throat> all of those things. And uh, as you know, your games progress, you might want to try different loadouts. And so being able to take things and swap things using magnets is, uh, is really useful. Or if you've got uh, different squads of marines, assault marines for example, then uh, being able to swap out the, uh, the weapons for your sergeant or just uh, your regular guys. This is one I'm working on, so you just want to uh, replace the, the bolt pistol with a, uh, a flame flamer or something like that. <coughs> then you have the the option to do so. And it, uh, it helps keep the, the model count down. You don't need to have duplicate models for, for everything. You don't need to have, you know, essentially two squads just to, to, to swap out different weapon options. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is uh, show you what I'm currently working on with uh, some Devastator Marines. Uh, with the heavy weapon options, more than anything else, can be are crucial to, to how you're fielding your army, the, the opponents you're going against. So one week, if you know you're going to be playing a horde against a horde army, you might want to load up on heavy bolters, or if you're going against mech heavy, you might want some multi-melters or grab spam or whatever it is that you want. And uh, you don't necessarily want to invest in multiple boxes of, of models, you end up with a lot of extras. Um, so being able to swap things out as you go is uh, is pretty useful. So on this showcase, <coughs> basically here is uh, one of my uh, Devastator Marines. He's got the, uh, the Grav Cannon, the Grav Gun with, with Amp. And uh, basically what I've done is I've magnetized not only the arms, but also the backpack because the uh, the different backpacks are going to go with the the different guns and you can't just easily swap that out one for one. So let me just break this down and uh, I'll show you what I've done. So I'll start off with the backpack just tab that. Basically you've got a, uh, a magnet in there. This is a little rough. You can see how the, the hole is sort of being gouged out because I actually changed magnet size in there. Uh, to see what would, would fit better. So I went to like a 1 16th on that. And on the back I've got another magnet that's been put in flush. So there's no raised area. Just cut off the tab, put that in there, line those up, and they go on like that. Also, just something that I want to do for stability, on the cabling down here I've used a very fine drill bit and I've drilled that out and put a little bit of paper clip in there and drilled the corresponding hole. And so the, the hose section will actually lock in like that and hold steady. So when you've got the, uh, the gun in there, it's not wobbling and floating around and coming disconnected and sort of spoiling the look. <coughs> uh, so far I've been able to do that with the, the uh, grav gun and also the uh, plasma cannon, uh, so that's something I'll probably end up doing to all the ones that I do. So, anyway, pull that off, and the uh, the arms are also magnetized. 
basically what I've done is I've drilled out the arms, put in the magnets, and corresponding on the torso. Now I have all of my marines magnetized exactly the same way so that everything is interchangeable. So if I want to play around with models or characters or whatever, everything is magnetized the same way so you don't have to worry about the different polarities and that's important right at the get-go to try and keep everything consistent. So over here <coughs> I've got my plasma cannon and that's going to work exactly the same, that's just going to slot on there. I've just uh, blue tacked the shoulder pads on for the moment so they uh, wiggle around. So the plasma cannon magnetized and again just a little tab on the on the cabling just so that slots in, holds in place and once that's painted up even now you can't really tell, but once that's painted up you know it's just going to look perfect. It's not going to look like you've had to uh, make too many adjustments. So that's how all of that is working and um, it's going to give a lot of options to, uh, to those marines. So if I want to have missile launchers I can do that or swap them out, have grav guns, plasma cannons, laser cannons, anything you want. And it just means I don't have to buy multiple sets <coughs> to, uh, to swap things out. So basically, my technique for this, let's get everything set up here. So I'll start off with the, uh, the piece that I want to magnetize. In this case, it'll be the, the chest piece that's all being glued together. And basically what I'll start with is I'll just take a uh, safety pin or so something else that's small and sharp. You could get a, a needle or something like that. Basically just something with a, a small, sharp end. And uh, just going to make a, a little indent in the, the center where you want it. And because the, the plastic or resin or whatever is soft, you can just sort of wiggle that around a bit. And that will give you a, uh, a guide for your, your drill bit. And the, the reason to do that is because um, if you just put a drill in there, you could be a little bit off center, you could make a mess. And that's no good. So. <clears throat> And just start off with the, the small little pin vise and I'll get that in there and you know that you're going to be well measured to the center excuse the squeaking and that just leaves the hole there then what I'll usually do is if it's not quite center or stable I'll just get my knife and uh, if you know part of it is up the top or on the bottom or on the side, you can sort of round out the rest of it, just make that hole a little bit bigger. I'm not going to uh, to do the whole thing on this, but this is just a, a, a guide to show you how to get started. So you've got a decent sized hole in there. <clears throat> and then basically what you can do is just move up the drill sizes. You can get to your 1 16th or you, know, you can go up slightly bigger than then the, the pin vise, basically if you've got any tools you can just use whatever drill bits you've got. I know the pin vises come with a, a variety of um, sizes and it's worth taking the time to, to do it, going up the, uh, the sizes in increments um, because it means that you can control where exactly the hole is going to be and uh, if you try to go too big too fast you can actually end up um, creating too many jagged edges and uh, end up splitting the whole thing which is, is no good. Um, if you go to something that's too large you can actually um, prise the whole piece apart and we don't uh, don't really want that. So then the, uh, the method with the magnets is obviously you want to get some idea about the, the sizing that you can use and I, I get a variety of different magnets uh, magnet sizes. And you want to know how big to actually make the hole. To um, You don't want to make it too big that the magnet gets lost. You don't want to make it too too small. You've got to force it in there. And so I find the best way is to get your magnets. And you can take a drill bit and uh, just slot them together like, uh, like so. Just let them pull on 
to the uh, the end and you can see the width that you need so if this one was too big you go alright that's too big go down to another size and you can check the, the diameter and see that that's going to going to work to that so I use that for my, my small magnets and I use that for my larger magnets so I know exactly which drill bit I'm going to have to work up to and it just saves a lot of uh, a lot of guesswork and uh, once you've done that a few times it'll you'll just know which ones you, you need to do if uh, you don't have the, the sizes um, it, you know printed or on hand or you've just got a lot of drill bits floating around it's just a good way to double check how that's all going to, to work out and uh, yeah once you've, you've got that all sorted out uh, you can do your, your magnet polarities and that sort of thing. What I like to do is if I'm drilling a drilling a hole, making that bigger, is I won't just grab a random magnet and, and shove it in. Is I like to check the uh, the polarity. So if we go with this guy. So I'll get the whole uh, line of magnets, and uh, in this case, it's going to go this way. And you can just double check. All right, so this this line of magnets is going to go in here, and you can get your your corresponding weapon piece. You can grab a few magnets and go. All right, you can tell that that's going to be correct, uh, because the danger is if you're just using like one magnet, uh, it's e very easy for that to get turned around and uh, end up slipping, and you have the polarity going in the wrong way accidentally. Uh, so I've just found that this is a good little measure for me to be able to say, all right, this is uh, this is working, and uh, just as a as a safety check, really. So what I like to do is um, with my bundle of, of magnets is I'll just get my glue, and uh, I'll run the uh, the glue just over the the corner, and it'll just coat the uh, the outside area, and maybe some just on the the end. And then I'll slot that into wherever it needs to be, and I'll just hold it for a few seconds while it sets, because you don't want to to pull it out because the magnets will, um, you know, they will still just pull quite strongly. So once that's done, rather than just pulling the magnet out, I will slide it uh, crossways, and uh, then you can just leave that to uh, to cure. So fairly straightforward after you've done it a few times but it can be uh, a little intimidating and uh, you know there's been a couple of times where I've, I've ended up making a mistake and I've had to dig magnets out of, uh, of crevices in the model and you know start again and it's a little bit of trial and error so I thought I'd put this together just as a little guide and uh, help you try and get the, uh, the most out of your models. Um, another option if you're not comfortable using magnets or, or spending a whole bunch of money on magnets is just the pinning option which is basically just using a bit of uh, paper clip or, or brass rod or something like that and uh, just using that to, to pin the arms and things in place and that works you know perfectly fine as well uh, the only issue with that is that uh, over time it can sort of wear and, and pull out a little bit and you might need to thicken it up with a little bit of super glue or floor polish or something like that. Uh, so magnets are a good longer term uh, option for um, pieces that are going to see a lot of wear and tear. But uh, if, you're not, if you're not sure, if you just want to test it out, pinning is a perfectly uh, valid option as well. So there we go, I just thought I'd put that together, that together for you guys and um, just show uh, a few options there to get the most out of your models. So I hope that's helpful and uh, yeah, happy modelling.